Hello, I'm Jamila Musaiba, an international social etiquette consultant and the author of the book Etiquette, the least you need to know. Today's video is very different from everything I've done before and I've dedicated this video to Q&A. I know a lot of you are asking me questions down below in the comment section and on Instagram, so I decided to pick the top most frequently asked questions and answer all of them right here, right now. Before we start, I just want to light up my candle. I got myself a cup of tea and I'll light it up and we'll start discussing. Voila! So here I am addressing your most frequently asked questions and a lot of the people have been asking me about my background and where I'm from. And I know if you haven't checked out the video about where I'm from, uh, this is the answer to it. I am from Azerbaijan. Uh, I'm very proud of my cultural heritage. I'm very proud of my background. My parents are from here. My grandparents are from here. So uh, I've lived and been raised here my whole life. But when I was 16, I went to college in the US and then I did my master's in Belgium. So I wasn't living in my country for about five years and then I came back, got married and I've been living here ever since and I love it. The second most frequently asked question is how old are you? And there are people that have been asking each other and actually I went ahead and googled Jamila Musaiba and the first most searched is Jamila Musaiba husband and the second is Jamila Musaiba age. So I'm going to answer this right here right now so you don't have to actually search for it. I'm 29 years old. I was born in 1991 on July 19th. Um, so my sign is cancer a lot of you have been asking about that too i feel comfortable sharing my age uh, and i understand those that don't and i think a lot of people have to be very sensitive about directly asking people about their age there was one person who asked me how do i answer to some question like that without actually answering it so there are two options either you could just say a range for example i'm in my 20s or 30s or 40s or if you don't want to even disclose the range you can just say i don't feel comfortable answering that question and give a smile so that way you're answering the question but with a smile you just let the conversation flow you don't leave that extra lingering tension between you and the person who, who asked that question so that's my answer Going on along with that, a lot of you have seen the video about handbags or shoes where I mentioned that I'm a mother of two. And if you haven't seen those videos, make sure you check them out. Uh, I am a mother of two. I have a daughter who's five and a half and a son who's two and a half. So I love them. They are my inspiration, my motivation to do everything. And uh, a lot of you have been asking, how do you keep cool when they misbehave? Are you a cool mom? And to be honest, I'm a human just like everyone else. I don't always have have this cool composed look all the time i do get also angry sometimes i do get sometimes annoyed i'm a human and i'm not ashamed of my emotions i just think you have to accept that this is an emotion that you're living in a certain situation and you have to let it go as long as it doesn't define your personality then it's fine and about how do I get to be done to be doing my YouTube and teaching and how do I manage it all, all the time? The truth is I have help and my mother-in-law, my mother, my family helps me a lot with kids as well. Uh, so they help me to take some time off to shoot my videos or to do my work. I'm very thankful to my parents, to my family, to my mother-in-law, as well as the help, the nanny that I have at home. Uh, without them, of course, this wouldn't have been possible. Going along with the topic of being a mother, I think it's already so much responsibility that you have to raise a child who is, um, you know, a human, who is kind, who is understanding, who is smart, who is everything that you aspire them to be. And uh, to be honest, I just try to read a lot of etiquette books to them, or not really etiquette, but like stories with a good morale where this child actually understands what's a good behavior, what's the right way to act in a certain situation. And I think the best example that we can be is by actually being the well-mannered person that we want our child to be. So they're always going to look up to us no matter what we say, they're actually going to behave like we do. So the best way for you to teach your child an etiquette is to behave the right way yourself. 
and uh, for now my kids are quite young and they are just like everyone else's kid um, they do misbehave sometimes they do have their tantrums they do have those moments and I'm just accepting and understanding that they're kids and they can have those emotions and they should show them because that's a part of growing up and I just think you have to be gentle and understanding but of course there are times when I also lose my temper and I think it's okay um, because I'm also human like everyone else a question that a lot of you have been uh, commenting is I think her English is not her first language or she was mispronouncing this word or uh, where is she from like which language does she think in um, I've done a whole video about how to speak five languages fluently so I do speak five languages fluently but I know more so I know about seven eight languages uh, my primary language is Azerbaijani and Russian and then I started learning English when I was in uh, middle school actually in fourth Great. and then I started learning Spanish and French simultaneously then I added German to that and then I started learning Arabic um, but over time when I moved to college I just dropped German and Arabic all together so I just uh, studied Spanish and then did my masters in half French and half English so I've maintained the knowledge of French and Spanish but I've honestly lost a bit of German and Arabic I can still write and read a little bit in Arabic and I do understand certain words and I can kind of understand some things when I hear them, but I'm not fluent in it. Uh, in German, I think I'm much better. I can read and write and, and converse in like a beginner's level, but I've lost a lot of it that I had when I was in school. And which language do I think in? I think I, I do think mostly in Azerbaijan and Russian and now I'm more after my education in US and English. Um, but because I was educated in English, I find much easier to teach in English rather than in Russian or Azerbaijani. I think that answers your question and one language that I haven't mentioned is Turkish because Azerbaijani and Turkish they belong to the same language group uh, they belong to a Turkic language group so I do understand very well Turkish and I do uh, converse uh, in Turkish but I'm not fluent in it uh, something I should be working on there have been so many comments about my body. Some of them are positive, some of them are negative, some of them are just weird, I think. Um, there was a person who commented asking, what is your BMI? Um, I just find it bizarre because would you even dare ask that to someone you meet in person? Would you, even if you consider them to be skinny or to be overweight, you will never ask them, oh, what is your BMI? Are you sure it's in the right um, range? Um, I just think you don't ask that in person, so why do you think it's okay to ask it online? Um, I have a healthy body and I'm thankful to God to have that body. And uh, my uh, body proportions or the way I look is mostly you know, just like in everyone else's case, is genetics. Uh, I take after my father, who's quite tall and also has slender figure, so I do too, um, despite of the fact that I have two kids. Um, I do not follow any diets and I do work twice, uh, work out twice a week, but it's not really intensive, it's more for building strength. And I've actually been working out for the past couple of months. I was working out and then I stopped. So it was in and like sort of like on and off. I wasn't really consistent with it. So I can't say it's because of you know, doing rigorous exercising that I have this body. I just think it's mostly genetics as well as I try to cle eat clean. I try to eat only homemade food, uh, mostly homemade food. Um, and when I was growing up uh, in Azerbaijan, uh, we always had a ready like um, like a homemade meal at home. So they prepared from scratch. We never bought anything frozen in the market. So we never microwaved our food. And nowadays I'm practicing the same at home. I try to make sure that the meal is prepared from scratch and that the kids are not eating any ready and frozen defrosted um, food. So uh, I think that has really helped me maintain my figure throughout my life. Um, Apart from that, I just think um, comments that, oh, I think you're too fragile or I think you're so skinny, you should gain some more weight. I think they're a bit inappropriate because you never know what kind of a battle a person is going through. Maybe a person is not able to gain weight or maybe they're not able to lose weight. So comments and body are not right, regardless if you're commenting on someone being overweight, uh, which we're now currently working on, uh, you know, the notion of body positivity. I think that should apply 
to people that are not um, you know don't have enough body weight so I think we should be careful when we talk about you know people being skinny or people not people not being a certain proportion um, regardless what they have it's their body it's their decision and you have to respect it uh, so please make sure that you do not comment or if you do just keep your comments neat and nice and polite uh, when commenting on someone's body or figure that final point just wanted to tell you guys that i am not petite i've seen a lot of people say that i'm petite and i'm not uh, to be defined as a petite you have to be um, 160 centimeters tall or less than that i'm 175 uh, and i have proper proportions so that doesn't define me as petite at all whatsoever in order to be petite you have to be a certain height and i don't have that height i'm much taller than that uh, so i'm not petite for sure for a lot of people that have been asking me about some you know suggestions of what to eat what diet to follow and uh, what are some things to help them maintain a certain figure um, i am not a proponent of any kind of diets because i don't think that you know a certain strict diet can actually be sustainable in the long run and we have to think about how we can maintain our body healthy for the duration of our lifetime uh, in my case i always call myself an intuitive eater and I didn't know that this was a term before actually I stumbled upon some articles about it and why I always called intuitive eaters because I never had any restrictions on myself so if, for example if I craved an ice cream on a certain day I would have that ice cream on that exact day when I craved it um, because I found over time that when I suppress my craving um, it just comes it bursts out a couple of days or maybe years or maybe months later and I'm just like want I just want to binge on it for the whole you know um, week or more so I think that's what disrupts a lot of the diets is people suppressing their cravings and then you know just getting a taste of it and then just can't stop eating it so for me it has worked that I crave something I'll have a spoonful of that or maybe I'll eat an ice cream instead of having the meal and then when it's dinner time I'll just have a proper dinner um, and that has worked for me and uh, also I'm a kind of a person that almost always knows what I want to eat like when we go to a restaurant I know exactly what kind of flavors or what kind of food I'm craving um, and that is amazing because my body feels like it got what it wanted and then I just stop having any kind of cravings um, if I want to eat a bag of chips I will let myself have that bag of chips but I don't want that bag of chips to define my diet as a whole so allowing yourself here and there is fine as long as it's not a you know lifelong habit of yours to eat bag of chips every single day a lot of the questions also are about either my qualifications or my background how did i become an etiquette teacher what made me want to do this so i already mentioned this in a couple of videos before i did my international relations degree from george washington university in washington dc and i did my minors in sociology and history uh, then I, in College of Europe in Bruges, um, I did my master's degree in European Administration and Politics. Um, and I did my master's in French and English. So more or less, I've always been exposed to some etiquette rules and diplomacy, some etiquette diplomatic protocol rules. So I was quite aware of all of that. And since I've traveled a lot in my life, I was always aware of different cultures, different traditions um, and different ways of behavior. Uh, naturally it brought me into um, learning more about different cultures and etiquette rules how they varied from country to country and then I think I was already teaching in university uh, I was a um, EU expert and I was teaching different uh, courses on EU for little children for teenagers and we started incorporating certain topics about etiquette and I wanted to become certified to teach that so I did a course in UK uh, in an etiquette school I think it was called International Protocol Academy of London so I did a certification course there I became certified to train um, other people in etiquette and became a social etiquette consultant and ever since I 
I have been teaching it in school. It has been already part of our school curriculum for three years now. Um, and apart from that, I do a lot of personal workshops. I provide online classes via Zoom now, but before I used to travel a lot and I taught different kind of workshops abroad. Um, and I have clients, I can say, from all over the world. And I'm very happy to say that. Interesting fact about me, I am a member of Golden Key Honor Society and also Phi Beta Kappa, which is an American honor society for people that have been studying humanities. Um, Bill Clinton is a part of it and a lot of other prominent people are part of it. Um, so I graduated summa cum laude, which is the highest honor degree uh, from the George Washington University. And uh, I think my background has always been um, that I've been into education and I've always wanted to, you know, learn about more cultures and, you know, been travel a lot. So um, that naturally brought me to, you know, wanting to travel a lot and work in a field that will allow me to do that. Um, so I loved teaching ever since I think I was in school. I loved helping my classmates with their homework and um, then I started learning Arabic before my brother did. So I would help him actually uh, learn Arabic. I think all of that kind of led me into understanding that I love to speak, I love to teach, I love to make materials accessible to people, I like to educate people and um, I didn't know what this would lead me to, but I knew that I had a passion for this. And when I was in university working as an EU expert, I had an administrative part of job and then the teaching part. And I realized that I actually enjoyed more the teaching part and I didn't really like doing the whole reports and writing all of that. Um, and then I got an offer from a private school in Azerbaijan and I started teaching there and I've been there for about six years now. Um, and I love teaching. I love uh, meeting new students. Um, I love shaping the young minds and I love educating the young generation because I understand that what we put into them is what they're going to turn out to be. And it's my way of contributing to the world. And it's my way of contributing to make this world a place I want my children and the future generation to live in. A lot of people have been asking me about elegance and uh, why am I always uh, so elegant or so they think or what do I do to look elegant and I think uh, for me elegance is not really about what you wear only or how you talk or how you sit it's more about really the mindset it's about your thoughts your thoughts should be elegant your behavior should be elegant your heart should be elegant and that includes being humble being kind being nice to other people um, being compassionate uh, empathetic so for me all of that is part of elegance and uh, when people think uh, oh she's elegant so she's not supposed to listen to a certain kind of music that doesn't apply to my case I love listening to reggaeton but that doesn't like make me any less elegant than people that don't listen to reggaeton or I love dancing um, belly dancing but that doesn't make me any less elegant than people that ballroom dance so I think it's just understanding and accepting that your mind and your heart is elegant and you have a good and right intentions and whatever you eat, whatever you wear, whatever you listen to doesn't define all of you. As I said in a recent interview that I gave to this um, Colombian digital magazine, when they asked me about that, I said, uh, I am different people with different kind of people. So I'm a mother to my children, I'm a wife to my husband, uh, I'm a sister-in-law, I'm a teacher, uh, I am also a young person who wants to have fun. So because I have different aspirations and different goals and different responsibilities in each segment of my life, I'm different in every single one of them. Uh, so I dress up a certain way when I go to school to teach, but that doesn't mean that I don't wear jeans or I don't wear uh, sneakers or I don't wear certain other clothing that is not considered so to call elegant. Um, for each life, for each role, I have a certain um, way of looking and way of doing my makeup and way of carrying myself. Um, and I think we have to understand that one specific job cannot define a person as a whole. And uh, by accepting that, we become more humble and more kind towards each other. A lot of people have been asking me about how to stay productive and motivated and how do you plan your day or what do you do throughout the day. 
and I am not a lifestyle blogger so I don't really like to share too much of my personal life with uh, uh, on my channel because I want to keep it educative and I want to keep it about self-development and about you becoming the best version of yourself by using the tips that I'm sharing um, but to answer the question is I have a lot of rules that I have to fulfill um, I have a mother that has to show up I'm a wife that has to take care of my husband I'm a teacher that has to teach in school I keep up with the homeworks, check the homeworks. I am a person who does YouTube videos that needs to do research and then shoot the videos. So because I understand I only have 24 hours a day, I know that I can't, you know, just waste my time. I have to make sure that I use it wisely so I can be present in every single role that I have. And I actually realized that the more things you have to do, somehow the more organized you become. Try it for yourself. Try to book yourself and for the whole day. Allocate time for sport, allocate time for meeting with friends, allocate time to read a book, you'll see that you'll get all of that accomplished much faster than if you were just to sit at home and think, oh, okay, I have the whole day to read a book. You will not be able to get, get past one page, I promise you. Along with that, uh, a lot of people are asking me what is making me so inspired to do my work or motivated. And I already said that uh, my kids are definitely my motivation. I decided to do the course to become a certified etiquette consultant when I gave birth to my daughter and then I started doing writing the book and I dedicated the book to my children because I was then already pregnant with my son and actually gave birth to him. Uh, it was throughout that process and uh, today uh, looking at them and seeing them grow up I want to be the person that they will be proud of when they grow older and they understand what their mother has been doing this whole time and I just want them to be proud of me just like I want them I mean I want myself to be proud proud of them. Uh, so I think for sure my children are my inspiration, but also definitely um, I get easily inspired by people who are more successful than me, people that are following their passion and dreams. Um, my husband is a huge motivation for me. I think he's very accomplished and he's a person who really encourages me to do what I want to do. So a lot of that I think has helped me. and. Uh, I get inspired by little things here and there. Uh, I can get inspired by a post on Instagram. I can get inspired by a candle, um, by just strolling through the streets and different things really. And I am more of a person who is visual. I love seeing beautiful things. Um, I love surrounding myself with beautiful things. So I think traveling has helped a lot in getting more inspiration. And if you can't travel, just travel through books or through movies or through items at home that you find inspiring to look at. And that's basically that. To also add up on this point about motivation, inspiration, I would say uh, surround yourself with good people. And by good, I mean the energy of people that match with yours or what they're saying or doing is what you're sharing as well. Uh, I think it's important to make sure that your friends and people around you are uh, sharing the same vibes as you do or looking at the way in a world in a way that you also do and share the same values and principles. Um, I have a lot of successful friends around me that I am very proud of their achievements and they have actually been there for me from the day I started this YouTube channel and they've been there cheering for me, helping me out, giving their guidance and their advice and they know who they are and I thank them a lot for what they've done for me. Another frequently asked question or kind of a phrase is uh, do you always look so put together? Do you always maintain your calm? Why do you always look like you're ready to be you know, filmed? And the truth is I don't. Um, you only get to see only a portion of my life which is like 15 minutes on YouTube uh, video and that's not all me all the time. Again, as I said before, I'm different with different roles and I could be a mom with jeans and a hoodie and my hair up, no makeup, running around in a park with my kid and then I could be dressed formally and then going to teach my students in school and then I could be, you know, I don't know, going to a dance class, <laughs> all sweaty. So I am human like everyone else is. So I don't want you to think what you see just on the video is true me all the time. I look differently all the time and I think when you understand that you you're more kind on yourself 
oftentimes we have this tilted perspective of other people because with either Instagram or because we follow them on YouTube and we think, oh, this is the person, this is how he looks or uh, she looks the whole time and they don't um, because it's a film, it's, it's an edited version of our life. Um, so be gentle on yourself and I don't want you to think that I am like this all the time, I'm not and I am like everyone else. I have my bad days, I have my good days and I just want to tell you that you're not alone and we're all in this together and we are all going through ups and downs in life and we have to be more kind to one another. Going along on that topic, I have seen some comments when people are like, oh, you have, let's say, a bracelet on your ankle. Are you sure you're qualified to teach etiquette? Or, oh, I can see your tan lines. Is it really glamorous? And honestly, you don't know how I got the tan lines and I wasn't really intending to tan. Um, I got them because I was watching my daughter in the swimming pool and I did not apply sunscreen because I wasn't meant to be in that area. So I got actually burned. So I wasn't intending to look that way or getting tanned, which because I don't really like to get tanned, but it was an unintentional outcome of the circumstances. So. Uh, just because I have tan lines doesn't make me any less qualified in terms of my knowledge to teach etiquette to others or share the tips and tricks that I've learned over the years. Um, same with a bracelet on the ankle. I might be wearing that when I go to a wedding um, because that's acceptable and then I will not be wearing that to work. Uh, so just because I do something it doesn't mean that I'm less capable or less qualified to teach a certain subject. Um, and one of the actual words underneath my Instagram profile is um, teaching is a new cool. So I just want to know and tell everyone who thinks that a teacher has to live up to certain standards. Teachers, just like everyone else, is a human and teacher has life outside of teaching and they can be their true self and whatever they want to be in that free time as long as it doesn't get into the way of teaching. Final point for today is a lot of you are asking me what do you do when you hear public criticism or how do you handle it? A lot of questions about negative comments and public criticism, what do you do? Uh, to be honest, I wasn't really aware of how much um, criticism you can get by sharing your knowledge or giving really free classes, especially because etiquette classes are quite expensive and not everyone had access to them. So when I was doing this YouTube channel, I wanted to make it more accessible for everyone because I was sharing my knowledge for free. So when people write negative comments, um, it doesn't really stop me from doing what I want to do because I know I'm doing the right thing because so many of you are thanking me for sharing my knowledge with you and you say how much it has changed in your life and how much you're self-developing and that's what makes me motivated to do even more. But negative comments here and there of course can uh, ruin my mood, can sometimes get in the way of the way I want to feel about my work. But honestly, um, in the beginning I wasn't immediately into that so I was really getting very emotional about every single one of them. Nowadays I'm not as much but I do get of course upset um, but I just realized that if I don't want to see this comment I just get rid of it. Uh, why put my energy into something or someone who is so negative about everything and then there are so many people that are saying so many positive words so I decided to channel my energy towards those that write uh, positive feedback and write positive comments or write um, are kind with their generous words and if the comment is negative but it is constructive then I pay attention and answer and try to explain my case but if I just see that it's just you know hating my general looks or hating my body or my figure or my hair or whatever I just disregard them I just delete them because I don't want that on my personal page just to finish this off, I always, uh, a lot of you have been asking me about uh, social etiquette and, you know, uh, online etiquette. And to all of you listening to this, I just want you to know that people that are saying these things will never be able to say that to your face. And people that are writing these comments, I want to tell you that you will never dare to ask someone in person about their BMI or say, oh, grow some. Uh, meat or I don't know why is your hair so weird you most likely are gonna keep that to yourself and I don't know why people treat platforms like online platforms any different than in-person interaction because your message still gets to the person who is communicating with you 
So something that you won't ask in person, why do you dare to ask it online, especially in front of everyone? Um, maybe you think you will feel better about yourself if, if you humiliate someone, or maybe you just think that that's what you have the right to do, it's freedom of speech. But I always say that wherever someone's freedom you know, stops, that's where the next person's freedom starts. So just because you feel, for example, it's your freedom to, you know, to maybe, I don't know, throw some litter on the street because you're free to do that. But then someone else has to pick up your litter and throw it in a rubbish bin. So I just think that you have to be mindful about your freedom. You have to know that you can use your freedom in a good way and not a bad way. And the freedom that we have given each other in terms of speech also applies to this. Control your thoughts and control your words because words will never um, be able, you will never be able to take them back and you can actually ruin someone's life with certain negative words. You don't know what that person is going through, you don't know what battle they are living through, so be gentle, be kind, do not ask questions you would never be able to ask in person. Be mindful that words have a tremendous effect on people's hearts and minds. So that is it for today. Uh, thank you so much for asking your questions. There are a lot of them, but I don't want this video to be a three hour long interview. Um, I'm gonna be doing this Q&A session every once I hit a certain milestone. This video is dedicated to the fact that I got my silver award button. So next time I get my golden one, I'll do another Q&A. I'll see you in my next videos and thank you for asking your questions. Bye!